ओके हेलो इज द स्क्रीन ओके स्क्रीन ओके नव ओके कैन आई स्टार्ट या ओके दक्षिणा से सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता स्मरिया गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृति पुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम परिज्ञानाश्रम श्री गुरुशंकर परिज्ञानाश्रम शंकर सद्गुरु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सद्गुरु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओं सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीरकरवाह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओं शाति 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 ओम नमो भगवते वैवस्वताय मृत्यवे ब्रह्म विद्याचार्याय नचिकेत से सो नाउ इन द सेकंड वल्ली ऑफ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर वी सॉ दैट भगवान यमधर्म राजा हु इज द आचार्य स्टार्ट्स द टीचिंग नॉट येट द टीचिंग एक्चुअली स्टार्ट्स द चैप्टर विथ अफकोर्स देर इज नथिंग लाइक अ चैप्टर वेन ही इज टीचिंग the upanishad has been divided like this into different chapters and different vallis in this second valli of the first chapter yamadharma raja starts with the praise or the stuti stuti of the shishya a yogya shishya a person who is a yogya shishya that means what a shishya who is actually a sadhana chatushtaya sampanna adhikari and a shishya who is yogya enough to ask for this knowledge and a shishya who has turned down all other kinds of uh, he did not get lured by lord yama when he tried to kind of entice him with all kinds of material benefits and said don't ask for this knowledge but still nachigeta held on to his third boon and said if i want anything in the third boon it is nothing but this particular knowledge of atman and he said that i have heard that some people say that when the body is gone when the body is dead there is something which is left behind and some people say when the body is gone nothing is left behind and i want to know the truth of what it is let us see now what are the things that can be left behind we'll see when we come to the appropriate you know uh, mantra of this particular valli so now what happened up till the ninth mantra we saw that there was a stuti of the shishya there was a stuti of this shastra itself of this vidya itself as to what kind of a shastra is it what kind of a vidya is it it is such a subtle knowledge and how many people are not really interested in this knowledge and those who are interested also have to commit so much of time and effort and interest in knowing this and that is why there are no takers for this kind of a teaching on self knowledge or atma gnana that's what he talked about and he also talked about what is the nature of the teacher who has to be there to teach this kind of a gnana that the teacher or the acharya has to be a shrotriya guru a brahmanishta guru ananyena prokte he said in the previous verses we have seen in the last session that a person who sees himself not different from that atma tattva a teacher who has understood the teaching of the vedanta very clearly through a sampradaya with the tradition a sampradaya tradition he has learned under a sampradaya with guru 
that means who has come under a guru shishya parampara where this knowledge about the atman is very clearly given and this is a guru who is capable of interpreting the words of the shastra the guru has to know how to interpret the words of the shastra here itself you see in katopanishad itself the verses are so cryptic sometimes the words are not really meaning what they actually mean so the teaching of the upanishad is in that vedic language and that is the chandasa arsha prayoga therefore some of the words are not at all familiar with us and so what are the words what are the words saying what is the implied meaning of all these words sorry <clears throat> these are the things which only <clears throat> a shrotriya brahmanishta guru can convey to the student so what did yamadharma raya do all this time <clears throat> he only talked about the stuti of the shishya a yogya shishya a sadhana chatushtaya sampanna adhikari he talked about the glory of this atma vidya <coughs> which can actually release this person from bondage <clears throat> forever and he talked about what kind of a guru is needed to give this kind of a vidya and also in the previous verse in the ninth verse in the ninth mantra <coughs> yama dharma raja said naisha tarkena matirapaneya this self knowledge is something which is very good which is very cryptic it has to be known only through guru and shastra the guru has to wield the words of the shastra and then only this knowledge can be really got by the student and he addressed nachiketa here he praised her means oh dear one may you understand oh dear one that without you know a guru without a guru to talk about the shastra without exposing your intellect to the shastra without surrendering to the guru tarkena by mere logic or by mere rational thinking it is not possible to understand what the shastra says there are many people who say that i am an educated person i am an intellectually i am quite a good 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 intellectually and i am able to decipher things i am a very logical thinking person i am a very rational thinking person and i can do self study of the upanishads but then it is not possible because very clearly here yamadharma raja says naisha tarkena matirapaneya na yesha vidya this vidya tarkena matihi apaneya this vidya this self knowledge is not something that is got by mere logic by tarka or by mere rational thinking it is not possible prokta anye naiva sugnyanaya it is only when you surrender to the guru who can wield the words of the shastra is this knowledge clearly understood sugnyanaya sugnyanaya means to understand this knowledge clearly what you need is nothing but the help of a guru who can unfold the shastra to the shishya the shishya may have so many doubts there are so many prakriyas there are so many modules of teaching how to teach which module to take which prakriya to employ all these things which are taken from the upanishads have to be conveyed very clearly to the shishya to understand what this knowledge is and hence prokta anye naiva sugnyanaya he preshtah he dear one unless you surrender to the guru it is not really possible and yam tvam apah satya dhritir patasi and you are of the firm resolve you have made it very clear to me that you are not interested in the preyo marga you are not interested in material goals of life you are not interested in artha kama purusharthas very clearly you have made it ex- absolutely clear to me that what you want is this atmagnyanam and satya dhritir batasi you are of this great resolve and not only that yam tvam apah this guru a sampradaya with guru who is capable of giving this knowledge to you 
who is capable of communicating this knowledge to you you have already got in me i am already that guru whom you are facing and you are asking this question now you may ask a question how do you know that yama dharma raja is a shrotriya brahmanishta guru we have a feeling that yama dharma raja's work is only you know taking people who are about to die and you know you know this kind of a taking them across to the other world this particular jiva separating the jiva from the body that is the work of yama dharma raja we say how do you know that yama is a shrotriya brahmanishta guru for this we have to go to the other upanishads there is an upanishad called as the keno upanishad in which lord indra who is actually the lord of all the devatas gives this knowledge to the other devatas like in agni and vayu yama etc and therefore he has got this knowledge from lord indra who is nothing but the lord of the devatas which we get from a story which we see in the keno upanishad and therefore he says here yam tvam apaha yam means a guru you have got a guru like me and therefore that is why tvam drigo bhuya nachiketah prashta and i am so lucky to have a student like you a bright student like you a bright shishya a yogya shishya like you who has asked me for this knowledge and i am there naturally therefore i wish i had more students like you and that's what he says there and then with this the stuti of this gnanam the stuti of brahma vidya the stuti of the teacher and also the stuti of the person who is asking for this knowledge to some extent are over but some more are yet to come till the 14th verse in the 10th verse which we are going to see today what is yama dharma raja trying to convey he is trying to convey that actually karma phala can never give this knowledge karma can never give this knowledge knowledge is not or moksha is not a result of karma phala moksha cannot be got by karma phala and it is only by this self knowledge it is only by atma gnanam that a person can get this knowledge no amount of karma vaidika karma ya laukika karma no amount of upasana can actually give me moksha gnana tu eva kaivalyam and he says i also know this now when i was a human being i also did a lot of yagas and yagnas i also did this nachiketa agni which i have taught you to attain the swarga loka and to get this post of yama dharma raja see this yama and vayu agni they are all devatas and they are all posts that they have got this is the work they are doing supposing any one of us have accrued that kind of a punya any one of us can become yama dharma raja it is possible therefore any jiva can become an exalted jiva and get the body of a deva jiva because of the extent of extreme number of upasanas yagas yagnas that they have done and yama dharma raja says here in the 10th verse that i know that whatever may be the extent of karma and upasana you have done whatever may be the elaborate rituals that you have done in your life but whatever may be the extent of karma phala that you get maximum what you can get you can go to the brahma loka and have this apekshika nityatvam of moksha in the sense apekshika nityatva means what till this particular creation is resolved and gone i can be in brahma loka and free from coming back again and again into this life that is the maximum one can attain by karma phala and that is what he is going to talk about in the 10th verse and also in the 11th verse and he says you had that opportunity to go to the highest of the lokas the brahma loka also but you did not want to take that because what you wanted was this knowledge where you can be free here and now nachiketa was not interested in, in krama mukti nachiketa was not interested in going to higher lokas and spending the rest of his time till the end of this creation in brahma loka he was not interested and he wanted only this knowledge to free him here and now 
as he is where he is that's why he says here karma phala no matter whatever is the type of karma phala whatever may be the upasana phala that is not going to ultimately free you from samsara for moksha only knowledge is required that is what he is going to say in the next two verses this is only the initial explanation that i have given for the forthcoming two verses so here he says in the 10th verse janamyaham shevadhitya nityam nahi adruvaihi prapyate hi dhruvam tat tato maya nachike taschitognihi anindriyaihi praptavan asmi nityam so he says he nachiketa janami aham i know that now i know that shevadihi iti anityam shevadhi means karma phalas the karma phalas are anityam because one cannot attain that dhruva padam by this temporary karma phalas what am i trying to attain in moksha i am trying to attain that immortality of brahman that dhruva padam or the immortality cannot be attained by limited karma phalas nahi adruvaihi prapyate hi dhruvam tat dhruvam means what that moksha which is nothing but abiding in one's own atman's own atma swarupa that cannot be got by any of the limited karma phalas whatever may be the type of karma you do whatever may be the type of upasana one does ultimately the karma phala the upasana phala is anityam it lasts for a very short time therefore even brahma loka prapti is anityam ultimately to attain this moksha which is dhruvam and nityam what you need is knowledge which removes my ignorance about myself and ultimately makes me abide in my own atma swarupam so na hi adruvaihi prapyate hi dhruvam tat that means adruvaihi karma phalaihi by the karma phalas which are anityam i cannot really abide in the nitya atma swarupa tato maya nachiketa chito agnihi i also did this nachiketa agni ritual three times i did this nachiketa agni ritual when i was there in the human form on this earth and therefore i became a deva and i have become a the god of death but this is also something which is going to last only till the end of this creation my yama dharma raja padavi my yama padavi also my devata padavi also is only because of the punya that i did and whatever knowledge i have got is this knowledge which i got from indra and i know that this post that i am having is only till my retirement till it is till it is permanent it is temporary what is temporary till the end of this creation of course we may say till the end of this creation millions and millions of years are there even then it is not a permanent one therefore here he saying tato maya nachiketa chito agnihi anind anityaihi dravyaihi praptavan asmi nityam so anityaihi dravyaihi by anitya dravyas it is not possible to get this moksha which is a nitya which is nitya what is moksha swarupa it is nitya swarupa what is atma ajaha nitya shashvatah puranah and what is my goal understanding that i am that nitya shuddha buddha mukta atma and anityaihi dravyaihi it is not possible for me to get this particular final goal of moksha i know that now and i am telling you also that because you have understood it when i was a human being i did not understand it i did all kinds of pujas all kinds of karmas upasanas and i also did the nachiketa agni three times which we have already seen by which one attains swarga loka and i attained it i attained this post but i am no now i am aware now that this dhruva padam and this nitya padam cannot be had 
by anityaihi dravyaihi and also by adruvaihi dravyaihi or adruvaihi karma phalaihi it is not possible to get this moksha that you are asking for therefore hey nachiketa you are a wise shishya you have not gone after these things though you have wanted to know the nachiketa agni ritual you have not asked it for yourself nachiketa did not ask that particular boon for himself he asked it for loka kalyana se for the sake of people who are interested in reaching swarga loka by you know doing this nachiketa agni ritual so he did not ask for his sake and next he says he says that he again praises nachiketa for giving up even the possibility of going to brahma loka with this nachiketa agni so what does he say here kamasya aptim jagatah pratishtham kritorantyam antyam abhayasya param stomamaham utu somamahad urugayam pratishtam drishtva dhritya dhiro nachiketo atyasrakshi so what is he saying here kamasya aptim jagatah pratishtha in brahma loka that is the highest of the lokas brahma loka prapti all one's desires are fulfilled and that is the place which is abhayasya param that is a place which is beyond all fears and all insecurities stoma mahad urugayam pratishta drishtva that means what that is that heaven which a vistirna gati the one which has got a huge vistirna vishalam swargam but even them pratishtam drishtva even having understood having seen that such a brahma loka pratishta is possible for you you did not accept that dhritya dhiro nachiketo atyas nachiketo atyas rakshi he nachiketa dhritya with with this understanding with dhriti with understanding you are a dhira you are a wise viveki who refused even the brahma loka padavi though you were capable of getting it i would have given you even a brahma loka padavi but then you did not ask for it you actually have refused it therefore again he is you know praising nachiketa's tyaga whatever he gave up he gave up so many things he gave up all the iha amutra phala bhoga whatever he could have experienced on this earth that also he gave up whatever heavenly pleasures he was given by lord yama that those also he refused even brahma loka prapti which he could have got that also he refused why because he wanted in his third vara he wanted only one thing and what was that this atmagnyanam to know what is it that is all the time there what is it that does not travel with the sukshma sharira what is it that does not die with the stula sharira what is it that is all the time there in the past also in the present also in the future also what is that atma tatvam that is what i want to know and that is what he asked in the third boon and for which here yamadharma raja is praising nachiketa again for his having refused all those things which he could have got short of moksha that's all other than moksha short of moksha he refused everything and then he says what is the phalam of this atmagnyanam in the next one before we go to the teaching proper teaching the 14th verse actually starts with nachiketa's questioning lord yama again so we have another two verses where the phalam of this jnanam is given so what is the atma jnana phalam you have asked for this knowledge why have you asked for this knowledge what is the phalam of this knowledge what are you going to get out of this knowledge that you are asking for to know about the atma what are you going to get out of this that is what is going to be told in the next verse in the 12th verse what does he say here tam durdarsham gudham anupravishtam 
गुहाहितं गह्वरेष्टं पुराणं अध्यात्मयोगाधिगमेन देवं मत्वा धीरो हर्ष शोकौ जहाती सो हे नचिकेता यू हैव आस्ट फॉर द नॉलेज ऑफ दिस आत्मा एंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ एन आत्मा इज इट व्हाट इज इट दैट यू वांट टू नो अबाउट दैट आत्मा व्हिच यू वांट टू नो तम दुर्दर्शम दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड because atman is not an object of perception it is not something that you can stand in front of it and look at it atman is not something which you can search for in this world and find it it is not a piece of an object it is not a piece of matter which can be found and which can be you know faced therefore it is durdarsham it is something which is not available for perception it is available only for knowledge it is not available for perception because it is not an object of perception it is not matter it is pure consciousness and that is something which is to be understood only by the teaching of vedanta therefore this atma that you have asked for is durdarsham that which is not easily understandable very difficult to understand gudham it is as though it is hidden as though because though this atma is everywhere though this atma is sarvagatam though it is the adhisthanam of this entire universe though it is the very content of this jiva it is something which is gudham as though it is a secret i perceive everything but i don't see the atma associated with it because it's not a piece of matter therefore it is not only durdarsham it is gudham and what it is anupravishtam it is anupravishtam means it is available in a very very secret place within yourself in your own hridaya akasha in your own hridaya it is available it is there hidden in this secret place so it seems once lord said that you know if a person wants to seek me a person cannot seek me anywhere because i am cozily sitting hiding in the very heart hridaya guha of the jiva and the jiva can find me where not outside anywhere but i can find the jiva can find me within his heart itself so gudham anupravishta as though hiding in a very secret place guhahitam gahvareshtam guhahitam that atma which is available for understanding in one's hridaya akasha in one's hridaya guha itself but it is difficult to see and understand that because it is surrounded by samsara gahvareshtam it is surrounded by samsara at the same time what it is puranam it is ever new it is shashvatam it is puranam and this atma how can you know what is the sadhana that is necessary for understanding this atma adhyatma yoga adhigamena adhyatma yoga third line what is adhyatma yoga anugamena through adhyatma yoga only through gnana yoga through shravanam mananam and nididhyasanam only this atma can be as though found i can find myself i can find this atma this atma is upalabdha available for me to know for me to understand in my own hridaya guha that is why krishna said you know i am available as that paramatma hridaye in all the jivas in the hridaya akasha i the paramatma is available i am upalabdha in everybody's heart therefore he says that this particular atma which he calls as devam see the third line adhyatma yoga adhigamena devam matva that means after having seen after having understood this effulgent atma this self shining self revealing atma devam devam means what finding this deva this atma deva means what that which is shining that which is effulgent 
self effulgent it not only reveals itself but reveals everything else we have already seen that in the atma swarupam so this devam this splendorous atma this self revealing atma this ever shining atma this avail el ever available atma can be got through adhyatma yoga through the jnana yoga and where can i find it it is there hidden in my own heart it is hidden in one's own heart but surrounded by samsara therefore normally i am not able to really see it or not able to really be aware of it i am not aware of that because it is surrounded by samsara but it is available in every jeeva's hridaya akasha and a person by adhyatma yoga who understands matva devam matva understanding this atma as what my swarupam seeing this atma as nothing other than my real swarupam what happens such a gnani dhiraha means gnani harsha shokau jahati harsha and shoka he goes beyond happiness and unhappiness he goes beyond sukha dukha what is our normal samsara sukha for some time dukha for most of the time but then he says a person who has understood and who is able to appreciate that self revealing self effulgent atma within his own hridaya guha by a process of jnana yoga called as adhyatma yoga such a person who sees that i am nothing but that self revealing consciousness i cannot find it anywhere else i am that consciousness when a person has understood that such a poor person goes beyond samsara harsha chokau jahati harsha chokau jahati means he literally gives up samsara he goes beyond all samsara now in the 13th verse yama dharma raja is going to talk about what is this adhyatma yoga what did he say in the 12th verse adhyatma yoga adhi gamena devam matva dhiraha harsha shokau jahati now what is the meaning of that adhyatma yogena jnana yogena so what is this jnana yogam what is this adhyatma yoga that is what is going to be talked about here in the 13th verse of the second valli of the first chapter so what does he say here yetat shrutva samparigrihya martyaha pravrihya dharmam anum yetam apya samodate modaniyam hi labdha labdva vipivritam sadmanachiketasam manye so what does what does yama dharma raja say here about the adhyatma yoga he said adhyatma yoga means jnana yoga so what does this person dhira do what does this mumukshu do ye tat shrutva he listens to the guru and shastra about this atma whatever the shastra has to talk or say about this atma this mumukshu listens yetat shrutva having heard this so what is this shrutva means what shravanam what is jnana yoga shravanam mananam nidhyasanam so yetat shrutva through the shastra and guru having heard about this atma swarupam and having heard about how to go about realizing this atma within me within the hridaya akasha samparigrahya that means what mananam by going over it again and again and making my knowledge doubt free samparigrahya martyaha martyaha means what jeevaha this jeeva this mumukshu who is interested in knowing his atma swarupa which who was called as a dhira in the previous verse so such a dhira is called as a martya here martya means what a jeeva who is a mortal jeeva right now as a mumukshu i am a mortal jeeva 
what am i looking for i am looking for moksha which is nothing but immortality which is in the form of nothing but understanding myself to be that atma swarupa moksha is nothing but understanding that i am that nitya shashvata purana atma swarupa i am that immortal atma i am not this body mind sense complex this understanding is what is called as the real understanding of the nature of the self where the ignorance about the self is completely gone for that what is the sadhana jnana yoga is the sadhana so what is jnana yoga yetat shrutva having heard having done shravanam about this atma swarupam sam parigrahya samyak parigrahya that means having made this knowledge absolutely doubt free this jiva this martya pravrahya that means what nididhyasana what is the meaning of pravrahya what is the nididhyasanam here pravrahya means nididhyasana pravrahya means separating the atma from anatma there is an upanishad called as you know mundaka upanishad which says that this atma is like that sweet grass which is there the munja grass we saw that in viveka chudamani also so this atma is like that you know that very thin strand of grass which is sweet to eat and this munja grass is surrounded by very prickly surrounding koshas many many layers and to get that particular munja grass and to savor it one has to slowly remove the outer prickly and thorny layers from this munja grass and carefully separate it from the outer layers similarly nididhyasana is such a process as if you free the munja grass from its surrounding thorny layer similarly in nididhyasana i have to separate the atma from anatma that is my nididhyasana to constantly understand i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the sense complex but i am this sakshi chaitanya atma i am this consciousness swarupi atma i am this nitya shuddha buddha mukta atma iti understanding this separating the atma from anatma this is called as nididhyasanam and the word used here for nididhyasanam is pravrihya pravrihya means separating and how can we separate can we separate the atma from anatma physically no it can be separated only by constant contemplation on whatever i have heard therefore shrutva means shravanam samparigrahya means mananam pravrihya means nididhyasanam so the jiva the mumukshu jiva what does he do he listens to the shruti he listens to the shastra for a considerable period of time for a complete from a competent acharya and continues to listen again and again and again till his doubts are cleared he goes over it mulls over it thinks over it again and again till his knowledge is doubt free that is called as mananam and once his knowledge is doubt free <coughs> what is that knowledge i am not the anatma body mind sense complex but i am this chaitanya rupi atma this i have to contemplate again and again and again which is called as the process of nididhyasanam and we saw the nididhyasana mantras we saw in the vivek chudamani jati niti kula gotra duragam those 10 verses of nididhyasana which i took in the last two sessions of vivek chudamani where it talks about contemplating over my own swarupa <coughs> contemplating over my own atma swarupa and what is it that i am contemplating upon i am contemplating upon my swarupam atma which is called here dharmyam what is dharmyam that which is revealed in the shastra that which is acquired through dharma that which sustains me that is brahman 
That is why Brahman is also called as Dharmyam. Atma is also called as Dharmyam. Brahman and Atma are one and the same. By now we should be knowing that Atma and Brahman are Pariyaya Padas. And so what he says is, what do we do the Jnana Yoga on? On this Atma Swarupam. What is this Atman? How is it explained here in the second line? Pravrihya Dharmyam Anum Yetam Apya. Claiming this consciousness Atma to be myself. Claiming this Dharmyam. Dharmyam means Atma. I told you why it is called Dharmyam. Because that is what is revealed in the Vedas. That is one reason why it is called as Dharmyam. Another reason is through Dharma itself, it can be achieved through Dharma. You know, proper, you know, the way the Upanishads and the way the Veda talk about the following of the Dharma. And Dharma is what sustains the whole universe. Atma is that which sustains the whole universe. And therefore, he says, Dharmyam. Anum, this is the most subtle thing. It is a very, very subtle thing that I am talking about. It's a very subtle thing that I have to do the Niti Dhyasana about. It is a very subtle thing that the Shruti is talking about. Yetam Apya, having got this. What is the meaning of having got this? Having got this Atma means what? Having understood that I am not different from this Atma. This consciousness is my real nature. I am this consciousness. Having understood that, what happens? Samodate. He is in the Sukha Swarupa Atma. He revels in his Atma Sukha. Sukha Swarupa Atmani Atmanyeva Atmana Tushtaha. Atmaratihi. The one who dwells. Modaniyam. Samodate. Modaniyam. Ilabdva. Having got that Sukha Swarupa Atma. God means what? Having understood that I myself am that Sukha Swarupa Atma. Modate. He revels in his own Atma Swarupa Sukha. Atma Swarupa Ananda. He revels. And he says, Vivritam Sadma Nachiketa Sammanye. Hey Nachiketa, this kind of a moksha, this kind of an understanding, this kind of a Brahman which I am talking about, the Dwara of this Moksha is open for you. Brahma Sadma, Vibritam Sadma means what? This Sadma means the mansion of Moksha, the mansion of Brahman is open for you. Vibritam Sadma Nachiketa Sammanye, the Moksha Dwara is open for you because you are fit for Adhyatma Yoga. You are a fit Adhikari. And whatever I am going to tell you now, you have to do the Shravanam on that, Mananam on that, Nididhyasanam on what I have talked, talk, what I am going to talk to you, what I am going to teach you. And hey Nachiketa, you are not far away from Moksha. The doors of Moksha are open for you. We have that Annapurna Stotra, Moksha Dwara Kavata Patanakari. We have that, you know, Anma, Anna, Amata Annapurneshwari. So in that, what, what, are, what are we asking Annapurneshwari? Please open the doors of Moksha for me. So that's what he's saying here. Yamadharma Raja is telling, even before he has started teaching, he has he is telling Nachiketa, you are fit for this Moksha. You are absolutely fit. And not only that, the doors of moksha are open for you. This is a figurative speech. We have to understand it. There is nothing like moksha is like a building. And there are, you know, that moksha dwara or something like that. Where one has to enter through that dwara. There is nothing like that. It is purely understanding that I, this consciousness, is the Atma Swarupa. My nature is I am of the nature of Atma Swarupa. I am not the Anatma body mind sense complex. I am of the nature of this Sakshi Chaitanya Atma. I have to understand. This understanding itself is called as Moksha. But here, as a figure of speech, the words of Yama are put like this by the Upanishad, where Yama says, Hey Nachiketa, with this commitment of yours, with this preparation of yours, 
you are not far away from moksha and he expresses it as the moksha dwara is as though already open for you that means what that means you are fit for this knowledge and very soon this knowledge is going to make all the difference between a samsari you and a mukta purusha you then once this is over now nachiketa is waiting in the first valli 20th verse itself he has asked what is that which is left behind which does not travel with the traveling jiva what is it that does not end with this physical body i want to know about that that is my third vara it is in the 20th verse of the first valli of the first chapter itself he has asked that question but so far for whatever reason yama dharma raja has not started teaching now after listening to all this thuti of himself from yama dharma raja now he starts reiterating and paraphrasing his third boon request again and ask the question to yama dharma raja again yadi aham yogya if i am yogya you have already told me that i am fit for this knowledge if i am really fit for this knowledge and prasanna ha cha asi if you are prasanna if you are happy teaching me if you are in a mood to teach me if you want to teach me and if you think that i am capable of getting this knowledge hey yama dharma raja please start teaching i have been asking you from the first valli 20th verse onward i have been asking you for this knowledge but you have been only praising me you have been praising the brahma gnanam you have been praising the shastra you have been praising the guru and you have been telling what kind of a nature of atma it is and you have been telling how difficult it is to get it all these things you have been telling me but then whatever i want that particular teaching about atma swarupa is something that i have asked for so hey yama dharma raja if you think that i am fit for this knowledge and if you are in a state of mind prasanna cha asi if you are in that state of mind where you can give me this knowledge please give me this knowledge and the same question is asked again in the 14th verse so let us read the 14th verse अन्यत्र धर्मात् अन्यत्र अधर्मात् अन्यत्र अस्मात् कृता कृतात् अन्यत्र भूता च भव्या च यत्तत् पश्यसि तद्वद सो इन द 20th वर्स इन द फर्स्ट वली व्हाट डिड नचिकेता से ही सेड दैट आई हैव हर्ड दैट सम पीपल से समथिंग रिमेंस बैक after the death of the physical body some people say nothing remains back so what is it he asked he did not specify whether he is asking about the traveling jiva which is left behind or whether he is asking about the atma which is all the time there there are two things there correct there is a traveling jiva what is a traveling jiva chida bhasa with sukshma sharira karana sharira and all the sanchita karma this jiva leaves the physical body and travels and it exists for some time in some different state and when the adequate physical body is got again for it with the fructification of the prarabdha for the next life the same jiva comes back in another body so the jiva is left behind after the death of the body at the same time there is this atma which is all the time there which is not traveling which is the adhishtanam of this jiva traveling jiva also which is the adhishtanam of the jagat also which is the adhishtanam of this body which is dead and gone also so about which one are you asking of course yama dharma raja knows that nachiketas is asking about atma that is why in the last few verses which we have seen yama dharma raja the acharya has talked about atma he said gudham दुर्दर्शम गूढ़ अनुप्रविष्ट गुहाहित गहवरेष्ट पुराण ऑल दीज थिंग्स दैट ही हेज टॉक्ड अबाउट नोइंग फुली वेल दैट नचिकेता वॉन्ट्स टू नो अबाउट आत्मा नचिकेता इज नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन नोइंग अबाउट द ट्रैवलिंग जीवा ही इज ओनली इंटरेस्टेड इन नोइंग अबाउट दैट नॉन ट्रैवलिंग एवर प्रेजेंट 
त्रिकालातीतम देश काल यू नो अपरिच्छिन्न आत्मा वॉट इज दैट आत्मा विच इज ऑल द टाइम देर in spite of the body despite of the body in spite of the traveling jiva that atma which is all the time there as the adhisthanam of everything that is what i want to know but in the 20th verse of the first valli he does not clearly say it now in this 14th verse when nachiketa has got a chance to clarify what is it that he wants to know he asked this question to yamadharma raja and what does he say he says hey acharya hey guru please instruct me on that thing anyatra dharmat anyatra adharmat please tell me about that which is beyond dharma and adharma that which is beyond punya and papa that which is not affected by dharma following what is told in the shruti in the karma kanda in the upanishads following that dharma anushtanam dharma anushtanam not affected by that at the same time not affected by the adharma also that atma which is not sullied that me which is not sullied by punya or by papa so what is the meaning of anyatra dharma anyatra adharma please tell me about that thing which is beyond punya and papa that which is not affected by punya and papa what is affected by punya papa the jiva is affected by the punya and papa the traveling jiva is affected by the punya papa but atman is akarta abhokta therefore atma is not affected by dharma or punya or even papa also therefore he says anyatra dharmat anyatra adharmat anyatra asmat krita akritach this atma which is neither the cause nor the effect this atma which is beyond the cause and effect anyatra dharmat anyatra adharmat anyatra asmat krita akritach krita means karyam akrita means karanam that brahman which is karya karana vilakshanam see this much nachiketa knows he knows what this atma is it's almost as if nachiketa already knows this but then he wants to know more clearly from yama dharma raja he knows that there is something which is there other than this body mind sense complex that which is not affected by the punya papa that which is neither a karyam nor karanam anyatra bhuta cha bhavya cha that which is not affected by space and time that which is desha kala aparichinna anyatra bhuta cha bhavya cha kala atitam kala traya atitam that which is not affected by time that which is absolutely unlimited by time it is not limited by time or space anyatra bhuta cha bhavya cha yat tat pashyasi tad vada that which you have understood that thing you have understood he guru he yama dharma raja guru you have understood that thing what is that thing there is something which is धर्म अधर्म विलक्षण पुण्य पाप विलक्षण आई नो दैट देर इज समथिंग विच इज अदर दैन कॉज एंड इफेक्ट विच इज अदर दैन कार्यम एंड कारणम आई नो दैट देर इज समथिंग विच इज नॉट लिमिटेड बाय टाइम विच इज नॉट लिमिटेड बाय स्पेस एंड यू नो दैट यत तत् पश्यसी यू नो दैट यू नो दैट थिंग एंड देर फोर हे यम धर्म राजा प्लीज टेल मी दैट if you think i am yogya enough for that he is literally paraphrasing or repeating the question which he asked as the third boon in the last valley nachiketa is paraphrasing it again and he is asking he himself is defining this but he knows the definition but he does not exactly know how to actually access it how to abide in it how to understand it he knows 
that there is something which is beyond punya and papa there is something which is neither the cause nor the effect neither the karanam nor the karyam he knows that there is something which is not limited by time or space and he knows that this is something which i want to know and this is what you know hey guru yat tat pashyasi this thing which i want to know you see it very clear yat tat pashyasi tad vada please teach me that you know that you see that you are aware of it you know what it is i only know that there is something like this i only do know the definition of something which is there which is called as atma but i do not know anything more about it and therefore hey guru please help me and teach me this atma what is this atma so from the 15th verse bhagwan yama dharma raja starts the teaching and the next two verses he talks about upasana and upasana on omkara and omkara upasana which is helpful in preparing the mind of a mumukshu to receive this knowledge and 18th verse is the verse from where the actual atma swarupa is going to be talked about so since we have come to the end of one particular section i thought i'll stop here and in the next session we'll go to the next few verses where the next two verses that is the you know 15th verse and the 16th verse are going to talk about the importance of omkara upasana as to what omkara is and how this upasana helps a person in preparing the mind for receiving this ultimate knowledge of atma and then the atma swarupam is going to be talked about which we'll see in the subsequent forthcoming sessions om nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushakah अवस्था शांवी मेस्तु प्रसन्नोस्तु गुरुस्तदा सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत माँ कचि दुखमाया ओं शाति शाति शाति